guilty. For the first time ever, we're reporting tonight, a Trump lawyer in the 2020 election case has now pled guilty. Sidney Powell, who you may remember from presentations like that one that she gave with Giuliani after the election, a key coup lawyer, a key player, we should mention, Jack Smith's federal case against Trump, and most critically tonight, a RICO defendant in that Georgia case where she was memorably booked for her mugshot. She was awaiting trial next week. The news tonight, well, she just pled guilty today, a bid to duck potentially harsher penalties in that criminal case. Unlike the federal case, today the cameras were rolling in the Georgia courtroom. You can see the defendant, now convict, sitting there. This is where a one-time presidential-level lawyer became a convict. She turned herself in. She admitted her guilt in breaking the law in the efforts to overturn Trump's loss. And, like any other defendant, she conceded it all under questioning by the judge. Are you pleading guilty today because you agree that there is a sufficient factual basis, that there are enough facts that support this plea of guilty? I do. That is a huge breakthrough in the RICO case against Trump. It's driving major headlines today about this lawyer, Powell, pleading and flipping on Trump, which strengthens the RICO prosecutor's case at this pivotal time, a time where, I should note, news outlets are reporting on this as a major story, even amidst everything happening in America and around the world, reports of escalation and the possible looming invasion in the Israel-Hamas war. NBC's Richard Engel will report the latest on that. He is live from Jerusalem as part of our coverage later this same hour. And there is still a speakerless house to deal with, quite rudderless, unclear when Jim Jordan may get what he now requests, which is another chance for another vote that many of his fellow Republicans say they will ensure he loses. So that is also going on. And I say that both as a general factual matter and a sign that amidst even those big stories, this first guilty plea by a Trump aide in the coup case is big news, hugely significant, and that is for several reasons. So I'm going to walk through a few of them with you right now. The first is the most obvious. Sidney Powell is flipping on Trump. She says she will testify against him. I repeat, Powell is flipping, a lawyer who worked directly with Trump in efforts that led up to the failed coup and insurrection, admits today for the first time in court that she broke the law. If you have to debate somebody about this and say, what did they do and who said that? She said that. She's a Trump lawyer. She stood there with Giuliani. She made all these claims. She tried to steal your vote. And according to who? Today I can tell you, according to her. She admits that under oath. She pleads guilty. She says she will truthfully testify now about all of it, including against potentially co-defendant Trump. So now we're going to show you tonight what it looks like and sounds like when that happens in court. Because Powell, who spent her career as an attorney in courtrooms, left one today as a convict. She struck the plea deal. She said under oath she will testify against, quote, all defendants, which includes the most infamous defendant there, Donald Trump. Now, we're going to show you now, so you can see for yourself, that moment as it occurred in the courtroom. The Georgia courtroom provides one sort of broad, wide-view shot. So we have highlighted the exact table position where you can see Powell, and you will see and hear her providing her plea and discussing testimony. You understand that the state is asking that you truthfully testify at all hearings and proceedings and trials involving the co-defendants in this matter, and that you have no communication with co-defendants, media, or witnesses until this case has been completely closed against all defendants. I do. I do. Those are some of the scariest words defendant Trump has probably heard in this whole long saga of a legal process. Why? Well, defendant Trump knows what he told her to do. He knows what she witnessed and observed. And he knows that in the RICO indictment, prosecutors used evidence of Powell, who is now saying she will tell all truthfully, plotting with defendant Trump and the now convicted schemes, including tampering with voting machines. Trump can also see dominoes are starting to fall. Powell is the second RICO co-defendant to plead guilty. And the other, Scott Hall, we should mention, did not actually have any contact with Trump. So however that plays out in the legal process, that's not a person who could flip on him. He doesn't have personal knowledge of what Trump might have said behind the scenes. Powell is the first to vow to testify about what Trump did. So that scares Trump. Oh, another reason this is important tonight, the reason why I showed you it's making all those headlines, it also shows the narrowing path for some of Trump's RICO co-defendants. Powell 
is the first person to spend time with Trump to flip. And the prosecutors are rewarding that. Again, just going through the facts, let me show you how. Powell got a deal because she pled. And so she has pled to breaking a single law today, interfering with election duties, across six counts. She will get probation and a fine. Now I'm going to show you what she actually faced, because she was indicted on RICO and larger crimes. So today we can show you she cops to one misdemeanor, which is bad. You see that in red. It hurts her position in other pending cases. We have more on that later. But she pleads guilty only to election interference and gets out of this with no jail time or any felony conviction. Now, I want to show you, leaving this on the screen, what she faced in those original charges. It was RICO, multiple counts of fraud, multiple computer crimes, defrauding Georgia's elections. This is a good deal for her by any estimation. And Nick Ackerman and Maya Wiley are here. We're going to get into that in a minute. I also want to tell you from the other side of the, of the table what Trump's lawyers are saying about this today. Quote, assuming truthful testimony in the case, referring obliquely to Powell, quote, it will be favorable to the overall defense strategy, says Trump's Georgia defense lawyer. So Powell was facing, as I just showed you, a lot more than one misdemeanor that she pled to. And that was going to be at ne next week's trial, which is still scheduled, except now it has one less co-defendant. She pleads out. Mr. Chesbro, whose mugshot you also see on the screen, he is now facing a tougher case with testimony presumably against him. So this is the first split we've actually seen on Trump's team. The other lawyer, Chesbro, goes on trial next week facing more pressure and potential jail time. And if Powell's testimony works against him, let me be clear, he is presumed innocent, and he will get to make his defense in whatever way he chooses. But if this testimony that she provides, along with that other now convict, Hall, works against Chesbro, if he's convicted and he faces what she doesn't, jail time, well, that is going to focus the minds of a lot of other Trump co-defendants. You can bet people like, say, Mark Meadows, a Trump RICO co-defendant, are watching this all very closely tonight. And if several people start flipping... You don't want to be the last one. And that brings me to another point I want to share with you as we kind of take this in. There's a lot of talk about Trump's aides like Powell being unhinged, quote unquote, or whether Donald Trump is confused or delusional or really knows he's lying. So let me point something else out. Notice how Ms. Powell, after all of her bizarre claims and alleged defamation, today I'm about to show you, struck a pretty rational, self-interested deal and when her liberty's on the line, she cooperated today with the prosecutors and the judge. She tried to sound sort of straightforward, even cordial, if you want to call it that, as she took on the mantle and spot as the first Trump lawyer and defendant to flip. And throughout that, I'm going to show you right now, she also had to answer the usual questions that the judge states about you knowingly making this choice to plead guilty, her age, her mental state. Do you swear from the testimony you, you shall give in this matter currently before the court shall be the truth and the whole truth um, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, can you please state your true and correct legal name? Sydney Catherine Powell. And are you the Sydney Catherine, Catherine Powell named in accusation 23 SC 190370? I am. And are you currently taking any, med any medication or under the influence of any drugs or alcohol at this time? No, I'm not. How old are you, ma'am? Oh, gosh. <laughs> 68, despite my astonishingly youthful countenance. Got it. And what is the highest level of education that you have completed? Uh, I have a Juris Doctorate degree. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. The whole truth, nothing but the truth, and the reference there to that Juris Doctorate degree, which is also in doubt tonight. Nothing but the truth. That is what was required of you in a court of law. That's why the things that you say or lie about outside of court become crimes in court. Nothing but the truth is what ultimately is required if you say that you will be cooperating. Nothing but the truth about everything you did and everything your client did, with some po possible exceptions, um, regarding legally acknowledged privilege, but not if it were a crime. So nothing but the truth. Who does the truth scare tonight? 
And why is Sidney Powell deciding at this late date, we're literally days out from her criminal trial, to cooperate? And does that mean more people will? Are we witnessing a legal breakthrough in one of the most important, significant racketeering cases against a former president who's currently running for president?